Well, first of all, thank you very much, TEDx and Bentley, uh, for this uh, honor to be here today to speak in front of you. Um, you know, Bentley, I know you guys rock, uh, primarily because uh, from experience, a few of your uh, alumni are actually teammates at my company. So, very, very small world. Uh, and just to also correct a little bit, um, I started off in Western Massachusetts and came out to Boston more recently. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is kind of my connections and how my connections have made it possible really for me to survive and for me to grow my business in the last 20 years. And really also to learn the lesson about listening when you make those connections, being mindful, being present and aware. You know, listening with your ears and listening with your eyes. So when I was 16 years old, a friend and I were out in front of my house in the Berkshires. We were splitting wood. And we were talking about starting a web development company. And I didn't realize it. But at the time, when less than one year later, when I was 17 years old, I would be alone. I'd be out of my house. My situation at home was one where I didn't listen. And I was kind of sitting there saying, what am I going to do? How am I going to survive? How am I going to live? Well, I wanted to go to college. And I went and met with my guidance counselor and talked to him about financial aid. And he said, well, Spencer, you're ineligible for financial aid. And I will say that connection didn't really pan out to give me the path that I wanted. But it did open my eyes and it did open that door to allow me to start that company with my friend. Ultimately, we did. Well... We said, okay, we're going to create a business, technology business, where should we create one? So we decided to build it in its basement, like every other technology company, I suppose. One of the issues with that, though, is I had to make a connection with the parents. And the parents were wonderful people, and they actually gave me a place to live. And this amazing gesture that they provided me really ignited my passion to want to give back and pay forward, and really, really drove me to want to make this business success. I wanted to be that guy 30 years down the road who could be able to give people you know, internships, be able to donate to charities, and ultimately have a successful life. So we took this basement, we poured cement, because it didn't have cement, it was dirt, made it something that you could put a computer in and not feel like it was going to just, you know, just blow up. We put a network in and we installed the T1 line. Now, I'm dating myself, but a T1 line in the Berkshires back in the late 90s, was unheard of. It's probably unheard of to this day. Well, that line gave us the opportunity to make a connection with Westfield Gas and Electric, the internet service provider who provided that. They were intrigued by us. Who are these kids? They got, they got long hair. They're, they're, they're just passionate about what they do. One day, it's a Friday afternoon, we got a call from Westfield Gas and Electric. Westfield Gas and Electric has an emergency. Well, apparently they had a web solution that broke. They didn't have anyone that could fix it. And wanted us to fix it. Well, neither myself nor my business partner knew this language. Well, how hard could it be? Right? I was 17. I was ambitious. I believed in myself, but I had to. And from that point, I went out that Friday night. I bought reference materials. I learned enough. I crammed. I didn't sleep. Monday morning, I solved that problem. That solution allowed us, or that success allowed us to get our first legit contract with Westfield Gas and Electric. Well, I had this contract, and mind you, this contract was $60,000. What, what does a kid in the Berkshires do with a $60,000 contract? Well, I hired my friend. Uh, you know, uh, he was my first employee, and you know, um, he helped me move things around and do stuff, right? But it was someone I could think with, someone I could talk to. This contract legitimized our business. It allowed me to expand further into the Berkshires, and even into the city of Westfield. I mean, hey, you work with Westfield Gas and Electric, you must be approved. From there, we opened an office in the city of Westfield, and something occurred, something happened to me that was fundamental in the way I communicate and the way I connect with people. I was, in a, I was in a meeting at Westfield Gas and Electric. The general manager, Dan Golubic, this big Italian guy, phenomenal, phenomenal guy, had asked me to sit in, thought I could add value. Now, mind you, I got a ponytail, not this cool, but it was a ponytail and a t-shirt, sitting in a room with a bunch of execs and a marketing company. I'm listening, I'm listening, and halfway through the meeting, Mr. Golubic looks to me and says, Spencer, how would you solve this problem? Before I could speak, the marketing owner of the marketing company interjected, came up with a process on how they would handle it. After they were done, Mr. Golubic looked again at me and said, Spencer, how would you proceed? Well, I had been observing the room, and I hadn't been speaking, but I had been listening, 
And I'd been watching body gestures. And again, the listening with your eyes. I had seen the reaction from primarily the staff and from the GM, because ultimately they were the ones using this, having this problem that I wanted to solve. So I incorporated that into my response, told him my solution, and he was on board. And we moved forward with that. And that experience in my life, different from when I was a child and I didn't listen to my parents and I wasn't in the home anymore, taught me the lesson that you need to be mindful, you need to connect, you need to really, really listen. And, you know, again, listen, listen with your eyes. So from that moment, I decided I wanted to move to Boston. You know, Boston's cool, right? Berkshire's not a lot going on out there. So I met a friend, and this friend actually I met through Western Gas and Electric. They provided a service that he needed, and we bumped into each other. So we started to do small jobs together, and it worked really, really well. He decided he wanted to head to Boston. But at the same time, Westfield Gas and Electric's, one of the directors over there, introduced me to his brother, who was starting a dot-com in Boston. Well, his brother, Brian, was trying to build a team, a team that could build this e-commerce solution out in the you know, out in Boston area. And I met with Brian. I listened to his vision of the company. And he said, Spence, your experience is what we need. I'd like to bring you in. So here it is, 1999. I'm 20 years old, still out in Westfield. and I have two pals in front of me. One is Gabe and all of his opportunities, and the other is Brian and his dot com. So, like any other, you know, twenty year old, I chose both. So the first story is Brian and the dot com. So if anyone lived through dot com era, it was all about investors and pitches and honing your listening skills and just crazy all nighters and all nonsense. But out of that, there were ten founders. And those 10 founders had amazing connections, and I got to meet a lot of people and just, again, gain a wealth of information around the finances. One of the contacts, one of the founders, named Steve, Steve and I connected really, really well. And I actually had met him. Again, if you look at the connections, the brother over at Westville Gas and, uh, the brother over at Westville Gas and Electric had been actually working with this gentleman in the past year, so I, I knew of him. We hit it off. And after we were done with the dot-com, he came on as a partner to get fused. He had an amazing set of connections in Boston with an amazing amount of opportunities. Years later, another one of the founders of that dot com came on as an advisor and brought all of his connections. So, Gabe and the Patriots. Well, back in 1999, when I came out to Boston, started coming out to Boston, we started to work on small projects for the past. Y2K fixes, right? Everyone was working on Y2K fixes. Um, and some other small projects. Well, along came the first Super Bowl, and their e-commerce solution was very, very slow. Couldn't purchase around the Super Bowl time. It was horrible, nightmare. They reached out to us and said, hey, guys, you help us with this other stuff. Can you come in and help us out? We came in. We optimized enough queries, enough of the platform, so you could actually purchase. Subsequent Super Bowl, you were on our own e-commerce solution. Something happened after that point. Going back to the listening. One of our contacts over there had been in a room with a marketing team and overheard them talking about a new website. We need a new website for the Patriots, for Patriots.com. Well, he came in, sat with me, and I intently listened to him as he explained the reasons why they said they needed a new website and what was so important with it. So I took that information and I buried myself in an office for two weeks with a designer. We only had two weeks to come up with a set of comps that I felt aligned with that design, aligned with those requirements, as well as would be good enough for the Super Bowl champs, or better than good enough for the Super Bowl champs. Two weeks later, we hand those designs to our contact. Our contact goes into that next meeting with that digital marketing team, uh, sorry, with that marketing team. And during the course of conversation, someone mentions, yeah, we should talk about that website. You mean something like this? He said as he raised up our design, and they were like, we love it. We had two months to build Patriots.com and be live before the season at that point. So again, though, it taught me that the lesson that I learned while I was in that meeting with Dan Galubic on really, really listening, listening and figuring out the true purpose on what we want to do with that project that's not only going to be just what you said, but what we know you need to do, awarded us the ability to do every single Patriots project. And even to this day, 17 years later, Patriots 365 was launched last year. Again, all get fused in our relationship with the Patriots. So, ultimate fighting championship. Now, I wanted to just show this connection because if you think about it, Westville Gas and Electric brought us to Gabe, 
Gabe brought us to the Patriots. So now we're working on the Patriots, and Gabe also has something to do with mixed martial arts. I, don't, I didn't know what that really was at the time. Well, apparently the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, the number one fighting organization worldwide, was having problems with their website. Ultimate Fighter would go on TV, site would crash. It was all sorts of craziness. They had heard about us because of the work that we did in the entertainment industry, with the sports and entertainment industry with the, the New England Patriots and being through Super Bowls. And they also knew the work we did with mixed martial arts. So they invited us down to their UFC headquarters down in Vegas. So Gabe and I didn't really know what we were in for. I mean, UFC headquarters in Vegas, like that's kind of interesting, not like Boston, not like anything out here. So we ended up flying down and sitting in a room with a bunch of execs. And I will say, um, it was a very interesting opportunity because they were different than the Patriots. Patriots were a bit more old school, a bit more, there was, there was this loyalty aspect with the Patriots, et cetera. UFC was all about the big marketing, big, ad, big advertising. It was a whole different world. So we sat there. We didn't prescribe a solution. We listened. We listened, watched the room, asked questions until we learned enough that we understood the brand. At that point, we proposed the recommendation and solution. Now, some companies in some places will go out there and they'll prescribe something before they really know what's wrong. And I, I equate it to going to the doctor's office and you open the front door and you walk, go to walk in and he hands you a prescription. And you're like, whoa, whoa, I haven't given you, a, I haven't told you my problem. It's much easier if that doctor were to sit down with you, listen to you, explain what the prescription was for, and ultimately what it was going to do for you. And that course of action and that methodology is why the UFC ended up allowing us to do all of the digital, um, all the digital environment. So over the last 10 years, I've taken what was originally a web development company and turned it into a digital marketing agency. I've moved into the Boston's, Boston's Innovation District. I've opened an office in Dallas. I have an amazing team of people that have strong, strong connections. They're dedicated, they're loyal, they're fantastic, hardworking people. My relationship, my wife I married, that was probably one of the best connections I ever had. She, she opened me up to an extended family. I'm an only child, she's one of 12. She's got 40 nieces and nephews, and I can't count the great nephew, great, great, and great, great, greats. It just blows my mind. So I must say, I'm also really bad with names. So those connections, a lot of my connections are little, little connections that are, you know, hey, little babe, hey, little dude, uh, to, to all of those great, greats. Um, but ultimately, one of the things that I was able to get out of Get Fused and I continue to do is the philanthropic side, being able to give back. Going back to that time I was given a place to live when I was 17 years old, making that connection, I want to be able to give back. So I work with organizations, philanthropic organizations all across Boston that help kids build character, you know, character building kids. I have internships with colleges at my, at my office. I enjoy giving back and I enjoy mentoring. And that to me is part of having a healthy and uh, a good life. Um, so I have a few, uh, few little final thoughts. Um, each connection has the possibility of you opening a door for someone or someone opening a door for you. Connections can become relationships, partnerships, friendships can last a lifetime. Jason, I went to school with Jason. He's having a baby next month. I, you know, I love the guy. He's the greatest guy on the planet. The more connections you gain, the more choices and opportunities you have to make your goals and your dreams. People want to help people who want to better themselves. People who expand their capabilities expand their potential to give back. And people giving back makes the world a better place. So lastly, these connections, my connections I gained through listening, allowed this kid chopping wood in the Berkshires to be here today to talk with the rest of the, all of you. And again, I appreciate this opportunity. And I hope some of this was insightful. Thank you.